Hello, this is Dave McPherson from the band In Me. You are watching Rhino Radio. Okay, ready? I was born ready. Okay. So I'm reunited today with Dave McPherson. Hello. Most of the time of In Me, mm-hmm. today of Dave McPherson. 24 years, yes. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing okay, yeah, it's a tough day, but I'm here okay. and I'm happy to be here. What does it mean that yesterday was too much hydration or? <laughs> or dehydration. <laughs> no, just uh, travel. Travel was a bit of a, in fact, travel was affected by hydration because there was floods on the train tracks. Okay, <laughs> so let's go down to business first. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jumpstart Hope is finally about to be released. Yes. We're talking about the 17th of January, which is upcoming Friday. Yes. I finally learned that release date. (laughs) Okay. I think it was supposed to be released in September. It got pushed to January. But now we have another headliner supporting that with Haggard Cat um, from the 18th. Um, Well, they're supporting us. They're they're special guests. But I I think it was a, a label thing, which is quite common. We've had it with our first album. Uh, it's quite common to push an album back just to try and promote it more and give it more space to breathe before you release it. And it's been nice because we've, we've always... We've released like a single a month pretty much anyway, so... I don't mind. It's, it, I mean, it's been five years since we released our last album. So what's a, what's a few months? <laughs> well, I want to touch base on that because the last time we've met was just shortly after we released Trilogy Dawn. Mm-hmm. And there was plan for a trilogy. Yes. So I was wondering if Jumpstart Hope, even though it has a very optimistic, um, kind of positive title, mm-hmm. did it kill trilogy? <laughs> um, no. I mean, basically, what happened was the lineup changed. Uh, so we we got a new drummer in, and we got a new guitarist, and it was like we should start fresh as a new band. And it's unfair on the the guys that joined the band to be part of a continuation where the second album of Trilogy would have been a mellow thing. And also the the, the previous, the uh, original members, uh, Gaz and Greg, um, had sort of lost the vibe of that. And I appreciate that. And it was nice to make a whole new thing. But I'm going to finish it. Just gonna finish it myself. So is it gonna come out as a solo project? Yeah, just a very small passion project thing because I'm a completist and I have to, <laughs> I have to finish it. But it was nice to make a something from scratch where we could do really heavy songs, really quiet songs, whatever we wanted to do, and and not be um, limited by the constructs of a concepts that uh, they were part of when they joined when, before they joined the band. If you know what I mean. So it's just a, like a new start for me, and these things happen. Is there a timestamp on anything we should expect with Trilogy? Uh, what? what? Uh, should we expect Trilogy in 2020 to come back to life? I just wouldn't hold your breath. Okay. This is better. <laughs> Jumpstart hopes a better vibe, better deal. We've got a better thing because of it. Um, and we grew out of the idea. Okay, and again, you know, we can expect jumps our hope. The guys the asked me if we could abandon it, and I honoured their wishes. Okay, so we already got, I think, five singles out of Jumps Our Hope. Some heavy stuff, uh-huh. some alternative stuff. Shame was released, I think, just a couple of days ago. It's pretty heavy. It is. It is. <laughs> heavy in content and in sound, so I really enjoyed that. Yeah, um, <laughs> and lyrics. <laughs> and, and then the complete contrast, you're going solo today, acoustic. That's heavy in a different way. Okay. Yeah. So what does it mean? Going to be some dark candles and uh, we're going to make everyone cry. Did you say dark candles or yes. dog handles? D- dark candles. I don't know. Maybe you have some dog handles. I've not no, heard about uh, that. But Mark does have these candles he puts up, but I don't I don't want to illuminate the stage any more than it already is. So uh, I, uh, I just play heavy music, but acoustically. Okay. And heavy lyrically and uh, passionately and emotional stuff. And when you're going solo on tour, it means that you take on the responsibility of everybody else in the band. And usually Gaz is in charge of making things weird and awkward. So 
who's doing that while you're going solo? Well, it's all me, isn't it? It's just all seven personalities that I share. Okay, so what was the weirdest thing, or where did you miss Gaz the most? When you just okay, I miss Gaz because all the time. I love Gaz. <laughs> I recently uh, moved to Brighton uh, because Gaz scooped me out of a pretty dark place, and he put me on his couch and he got me a job in the NHS and um, got me back to li- back to back to the living, the land of the living again. So. I just miss Gaz all the time. Okay, well, you're getting re- reunited, I think, I don't next know why week. I looked at the camera. Like, I could just text <laughs> We're him. all watching. He's watching as well. He will watch this. He, will watch. he, is, he is a narcissist of okay. the most emphatic kind. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to touch on something that we've touched on the last time we spoke. I remember um, now. Yes. <laughs> it was I remember um, the at the, yeah, the, uh, the Institute. <laughs> um, <laughs> And we talked about the mainstream media culture, touched on singles. Oh, Gaz got angry about that. Yes, a bit, a bit. <laughs> he likes talking about that, and I get where he's coming from. But do you think that's something we need to change or something we need to embrace? People are going on playlists on Spotify and anything else. Sometimes they skip the entire album. They just go for either one single or one single from the band completely. If I really like a band, I have to listen to the album through. You know, I don't just sort of skip through it. Uh, so, but I, I'm not one to tell people what to do. And maybe culture has changed in that respect. But I, I don't like the throwaway, disposable culture of music or films or anything like that. I think you should w- watch a film or a, a, a series or whatever, or listen to an album the way the artist intended, if you have the time and you can do that because that's how they intended it to be heard. But then also maybe, like, it's quite interesting what Bring Me The Horizon have done recently, saying that they might not do albums anymore. They might just do little standalone releases. So maybe things are changing and shifting. I mean, albums used to be 20 tracks, now they're about 10, 11. Yep. So maybe that's the direction? Um, yeah, I, I think it's all about, it's all about the individual artists' uh, motives for their particular release or whatever. But I wouldn't. I, I, I like a 12 track album, personally. I think 20 is too much. 20 is going to have filler, uh, even if it isn't filler. It might be like not filler on a, a, a smaller album. But I just think that's, a, that's, a that's going to be two hours, Nitty. That's a long time for someone to sit down and listen to an album. I'm guessing that's what we grew into. We've got stuff to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and if you don't mind, I want to talk about Shame, the recent out, the recent single out of Jumps Out Hope. Mm-hmm. Um, touches on mental health, about sharing with people around you. Um, would you mind sharing the tools that you, that help you when you're in a dark place? Um, I mean, it surrounds us in all situations, whether it's our musicians that we look up to and we lose them every couple of months, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, friends, ourselves. And sometimes sharing, which is the topic of that um, that track. Well, you, you touched on a, the strongest word there is sharing, sharing and, and talking to people, and not hu- not holding stuff in and doing something about it. And you do not sometimes need other people to help you with that, um, especially close friends or family, definitely. And then maybe they'll talk in return. And go, oh, I didn't realise that we could talk about this stuff. And that's helpful. Um, there are things available to everyone. There's Samaritans or there's always a, a local charity based thing or stuff that's funded by the NHS. So just talk. Talking's good. And uh, especially, I know it sounds sexist, but for men, there's much more of a stigma about talking about your feelings and emotions, hence there's m- much more suicide amongst men. So that's a very good thing. And... Um, I think it's a sign of a stronger person to talk, to, to open up. Uh, so don't be afraid to um, hold it all in just because you think you have to. You don't. You really don't. You really should talk to someone. And hopefully everyone's got someone that they can talk to. Um, and then that could lead to other things. And then they might go, well, I went to this or whatever, whatever. be it addiction or mental health or whatever. So um, uh, having started working for the NHS recently, there's there's definitely many things people could do to, to, to help themselves and it's not just the person not just the victim of someone that's suffering everyone else is affected by <clears throat> people that are going through any kind of uh, mental health problems and um, it, yeah 
being connected and talking to each other is, is the key, I think. Good and then that sounds really obvious, but... Sometimes it, it the really obvious is. things are really difficult. I mean, yeah. sharing sometimes is the most difficult thing Everyone to do. Everyone goes through stuff. Everyone goes through stuff. And <clears throat> I, I, def- I don't believe anyone that says they're just... They're all perfect and fine in the head. So um, everyone has someone they can chat to, I, I, I hope. And if you don't, then seek some something that... Like, like Samaritans or something like that. that that's, I'm not an expert on it, but... Thank you very much for I've sharing. <laughs> Thank you very much, and hopefully we'll help somebody that needs to. I hope that so. Reminder. I hope so for sure. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up on a more positive uh, note. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't mind, I'm gonna confront you with a rumor that I found online. You gotta what? I'm gonna confront you with a rumor. <laughs> okay. A rumor. A rumor. Yeah. I don't like this. Okay. <laughs> That's why you can either disprove it or confirm it completely. Okay. So after being titled the the breakup musician. People are saying that you are allergic to romance. Is that correct? No, <laughs> no, no. I, I've always like since uh, Overgrown Eden, the first Emmy album. For some reason, the Emmy songs are to to make it a bit more larger than life and theatrical and dramatic. I just find breakups in like in films as well and telly and and, and songs. Um, they're they're a cool. A potent thing to to uh, to explore artistically, <laughs> and you know Romeo and Juliet. You know what I mean. So that's a big one. Yeah, not necessarily breakouts, <laughs> but just um, dramatic endings. Romance. Okay. Romance is a, an interesting thing to sing about, and not sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> Okay. Well, yeah. Thank you very much for uh, that. But that's not true. <laughs> <It's> not okay. <laughs> no, I'm not like okay. had a thousand breakups. <laughs> so before we say goodbye, we'll mention that Jumpstar Hope is finally out this upcoming Friday, the 17th of January. You're going on tour, supported and joined by Haggard Cat yes. of the 18th yeah, of January. Yeah, I, I know the guys from the heck days. Oh, it's going to be fun with them. I hope <laughs> they don't wreck the stage before we come on. Maybe. Maybe. They used to wreck stages. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say to fans and listeners out there before we say goodbye? Happy new decade. Okay. Yeah, I, I wish Gaz was here. <laughs> he would have. He would have made this. Shout out. He would have made this so much more interesting. Shout out, Gaz. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.